who Jesus really is and what he really said and his nature and his character. And I just started this study and I started writing things down and the notes got longer and longer and longer. And before I knew it, it's a 300 page book. But I mean, you know, what John said, hey, you know, everything that Jesus said could not be written in all the books in all the world. <laughs> but so I did 300, but, um, but yeah, so uh, anyway, that's a blessing. And uh, Trilogy Christian Publishing is publishing it, TDN. So that's happening right now. And God is so good, right? Um, I, uh, I have a, a ministry called Holy Ground Life. And uh, yeah, and it's like, it's like a movement and prayer. Simple as that. I have yoga in my background. And I know some people are like, yoga. You know, but no. Um, it's just about moving our body in a glorious and beautiful way because we are not just what we think. We are a three-part person. We are spirit, hallelujah, believing in Jesus. Oh, oh, we are soul. That is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And we live in this body. And when we take all three of those elements and worship God, I sense his presence every time. And it's a presence that sets people free. It's Isaiah 61 anointing. It's the healing of the broken hearts. It's the healing of the body. It's the setting the captives free in the way they think. And I really just show up, and it's about an hour and 15 minutes on Saturday morning. You're all welcome. And the Holy Spirit's just there, whether I feel like doing it or not. And sometimes I'm a little cranky and I don't want to. But sometimes I'm like, yeah, let's go. But either way, it's all the same. And that's the way it is for our ministries. You know, but mostly and most important, I'm your sister. I'm your friend. That's really, and really the main thing that I most like identify with in life, and I'm going to cry right now because it's huge. God loves me. That's it. I would, I don't have to write a book. I don't have to be the head of a huge ministry. I don't have to be the pastor of a church. I just have to know God loves me. It's not about what I do in this life. He's not going to hug me and say, oh, my gosh, look at your degree list. Or he's, he's not going to look at all the list of amazing stuff I did. He's going to say, did you love people? And I'll say, I did because you loved me. Just like Michelle was saying, I, I was able to love people because you taught me how. And sometimes it's so hard. <laughs> You know, the other night I was just, I laid down to bed and it was a hard day. You know, it was one of those days where my husband was pretty rough on me. <laughs> I love my husband. I don't want to throw him under the bus. But, you know, he was just, he was having a hard day. So he turned it on me and I was just getting the accusations and the condemnations and the you should, you should, you should. And I just went to bed just feeling like crud. And I just stopped. And the only thing I put on my heart was how much God loves me. And I know it sounds so simple, but I was just like, God, you love me. And I, I, you know, the other night in prayer, it was like, he just told us that it's not about the miracle. It's not about the financial huge thing. It's not about the ministry. It's not about your family, all loving Jesus and coming together. It is about that. But it's just like what Jesus said, seek first his kingdom and all these things get added. So it's like, the first thing, you love me. And your love is the source of my miracle. Your love is the source of healing my husband and whoever else is being cruddy. Your love is the source of who I really am, not who they say I am. You know, uh, someone said the other day, you really need to know as a Christian who you are. No, it's real. Because the world's going to be screaming at you. Every device that you have in your hand is going to be telling you you who you are. You're susceptible to COVID. You know, you're a powerful woman. Take control over those men. I, I mean, you know, it never used to be that way, but that's the way it is, right? Ah! Woman, hear me roar! I mean, like, oh my gosh. We're really in that generation. It's no longer. We're beating up on the men, right? We are. No, no, I mean, women are. It's not good. Woman, hear me wrong. You know, but listen, I, I, eight-year-old Teresa, 
woman, hear me roar, and numbers too big to ignore, and I know too much to go back and pretend. My mom was like, what are you singing? <laughs> but that Helen Reddy, right? Anybody who's not, yeah, right, right? Uh, I know, your 30-year-old people are just like, what? <laughs> Seriously, though. Listen, God gave me an image, Let me a, a vision. I'm going to share it with you. I haven't even got to my message. I probably won't ever get to it. Anyway, I am, anyway. Um, so, yes, God gave me this vision. Let me share it with you. It is powerful. I was in prayer. We got Wednesday night. All of you were invited. Wednesday night, 7 to 8. Simple, simple prayer. Nobody's leading it. We get quiet, and the Holy Spirit just starts moving freely. There's nobody telling you how to pray, and there's nobody praying for you. You don't just sit and wait for that loud mouth to pray. You are a part of it. This is real prayer times in these 2022, 20, 23, 24, 25, 26. We have to be hearing God. It is essential. He said to me, my people need to know what my voice sounds like. Okay? It's life and death now. We're getting into those that more narrow, narrow, narrow path. It's life and death. You need to know what your Savior's voice sounds like. If you want to know what his voice sounds like, read this. <laughs> a Bible that's falling apart means a person's not. Anyway, no, okay, you know that. Anyway, this is the vision. This is the vision. So there is a dough, and, and I, I literally close my eyes, and it's the most beautiful thing. And this, this dough is beautiful, and she's vulnerable. And she is quiet, and she is surrounded by lions, and they are ferocious, and they want to tear this doe apart. They're licking their lips and wanting to attack her. They are growling. They are intimidating, and she is not even trembling. And she is just confident. And they're getting ready to come in for the kill. And she bends her knees. Let me bend this. Boom! And so she bends her knees and she leaps up above the lions. And she goes to the tallest mountain. She takes a deep breath and she says, My God reigns. And the lions scattered and they went into the cave. And what appeared to be a lion was actually just a fake pelt, a fake skin that began to deteriorate and fall away off of these things that went into the caves. And they were the enemy and his things. And they were out to get this doe, which is the church. And when she spoke, because they knew, she knew the truth, that her God reigns, and nothing they could do to her could hurt her. And they were then exposed for who they are. And so this is the season. This is a prophetic vision. This is the season we're in. We're no longer going to see churches falling with sexual uh, misconduct. No more of that. Because the demonic is going to be so uh, in your face. They're no longer hiding behind lion roar type images or uh, you've seen it. We've seen it. We hear it. We're now hearing just absolute voices from darkness speak on places of high authority. So just know you are that church. And I want you to keep saying every day, my God reigns. Because that's what's true. And all of heaven is cheering you on because they're saying it as well. Hallelujah. Okay, let's get to the message. Anyway. Okay. Does this sound familiar? Fill in the blank. I should be a better. Okay. Daughter. Oh, no. Daughter. No, I'm sorry. Um, no. I'm totally kidding. I should be a better mother. That's more like, okay, mother, uh, sister, friend, um, what, auntie, I don't know. I should be a better. How about this one? I need to be more fill in the blank. Fearless. If I could just 
everything would be so much better. If I could just get that miracle, ah, next week I could be like, you know, Billy Graham. Um, if I could just get this amount of money, if I could just not work so much and be at home more, if I could just be at home more, or not more be at home more, but work more and bring in more money for my family, okay? I need to make God proud of me. Are these sounding familiar? I need to make God proud of me. He's given me so much. I need to make God proud of me. How about this one? I messed up. I always mess up. I am, I messed up. But listen, this is what leads from that statement, I messed up. God, you messed up. Where were you? I messed up. God, you messed up. And I I know no one needs to raise their hand, but you told me to do that. What happened? Where were you? You're supposed to be faithful. You're supposed to be true. Where were you? This is a script, actually, that's been going on since the very beginning of time. This is a script being spoken by our enemy, the deceiver, every day of our lives. He tries to get you into the mindset that you do not have, that you're lacking something that you actually already possess. So think about um, Eve. And if any of you went to Chad Gonzalez, you're going to remember this. But remember Eve sitting in the garden under the tree, chapter 3 of Genesis, right? She's sitting under that tree. And she's looking at this thing. And she's like, hmm, I don't know. And, and the, that ugly old serpent comes up, slithering up, sneaky, and saying, hey, Eve from the tree. And uh, he, she's like, I, I, I'm, I, I can't do that. God said I shouldn't do that. Um, And he goes, oh, if you eat from it, you're going to know the knowledge of good and evil. And she's like, oh, oh, I'll know something. And then she says, oh, but he said, if I eat it, I'll die. You're not going to die. You're not going to die. So she ate from the tree. You know, this occurred to me. What if she had just remembered that in a couple hours, she's going to walk in the cool of the day with her daddy. And all she had to do was say, hey, Papa. And he'd say, yes, my masterpiece. (laughs) Yes, my beautiful daughter. Yes, my perfect creation. You know, her, her spirit talked to his spirit with no separation. She was stunned. And I don't mean about her hair and her boobies and her booty. I mean, her spirit was stunning. Why? Because she was made with the same spirit of our loving, beautiful, big, gigantic God. The one who simply said, let light be. And right now the scientists are saying our universe is still unfolding at the speed of light. This is what was inside of her. She was just powerful. She wasn't this list. How many times we get this like, oh, well, I guess I'll eat from the tree. Or she's like, she's like three-year-old or something. She had all the knowledge of God because she had the spirit of God. She was like just one of those smarty pants women who know everything, right? Like she was just new stuff. But all she had to do was say, hey, Papa, as she walked in the cool of the day, what is this good and evil? And he would have said, goodness is me, really. Oh, I love you. Goodness is every gift that I give you. Goodness is this garden. Goodness is all these beautiful trees. Goodness is the job I gave you that's so cool, naming all the animals. Goodness is who you are, who you were made to contain. You were made to be a container of goodness. And she said, oh. And then he'd say, let me tell you about evil. You were never made to contain it. You weren't made to perceive it. You're not made to see it. You're not made to hear it. You're not made to experience evil in any respect. You're not a container that's able to contain evil. That's not the way I made you. Spirit, soul, or body. And she said, okay, I don't want that. 
And I know I'm looking out at faces, and I know you guys have seen evil. You've seen stuff like death that wasn't right, and you've seen uh, stuff in your houses that's evil. It's not of God. It has nothing to do with the way you were made to live. So she was separate. So if only she had remembered. So today, let me challenge you. Let's remember, okay? Let's remember who we walk with. Let's remember that the gap that create, that was created, the spiritual death, that big chasm, that as she ate the fruit, she stepped away from her daddy. She stepped away, and the very first thing that happened when she stepped away, the very first thing, shame. I'm not enough. This body needs to be covered. So always remember, and Michelle said it too, and I think this is a beautiful theme that we're going with here, that shame, condemnation, accusation are never from your papa. They're never from God. He will never tell you, get it together, girl. Condemnation is always from the darkness conviction, that's another thing. It's not like, oh yeah, go out and do whatever you want, baby. I'm your daddy and I'll pay for it all. No. <laughs> conviction is just the Holy Spirit saying, okay, let me help you up. It's, it's the prodigal son father. It's come on, baby, let's go. Let's get, it's Jesus talking to the woman who was caught in the middle of adultery. And, and she said, he said, woman, where are your accusers? Are they not here? She goes, no, not one of them stayed. You know the story, yes? Not one of them stayed. And he says, baby, I don't accuse you either. But go ahead. Go on this path of blessing that I have for you, Proverbs 4. Go on that path of blessing. Don't step over into that ugly, dark, yucky place where The lion can gnaw at you. Don't get over there. So let's remember. Let's remember, guys. Let's do what Eve didn't do. And let's remember that in that moment that you got to be born again of the Spirit. Born again. That moment where you turned your heart toward Jesus. (gasps) Wow. You know, we didn't. We may not, I don't know about you, some of you may have had that moment when you were a little kid, and you just know confidence from that moment forward. Maybe it happened like me, where I actually remember the moment and the atmosphere, and I smell, and I could hear, and I could feel the sun, and I know exactly that moment. But, you know, it had nothing to do with this, or this, or these. It had nothing to do with that. What it had to do with was a spiritual born-again moment, right? And, you know... When, that, when God said, light be, there was the big bang. But in the spirit, when you said, God, let it be, there was a big bang in the spirit realm. A big bang. And what happened in that moment is your spirit became absolutely perfect. Your spirit won't, doesn't need to grow up. Your spirit doesn't need to be healed. Your spirit does not need to be mature. It doesn't need to be filled anymore. It's maxed out. You know, uh, when you became born again, you turned your heart and you said, and if maybe you haven't done that yet, do it right now. Why not? Seriously, you, you pay nothing. All you do is you get your heart to him and you say, Jesus, I believe I make you Lord of my life. Take my life. Here is my heart. Perfect. You were translated from darkness to light in that moment. Do you know that your spirit, we're we're all going to know each other in heaven. Same exact spirit. And if we get into that mindset, like, I'm eternally healed. And when this body screams out in pain or this mind screams out in accusation and you should, you could, you you need to, this kind of stuff, you say, 
my spirit's perfect. And we just always pull it right back to that perfect spirit in right standing with God. It says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, now if any was, any, anyone is enfolded in Christ, she has become an entirely new person. Hebrews 1, 2 says that we now have the language of a son. It's been that gap, that big, huge cavern where Eve was pulled away. Jesus Christ filled it 100%. He who knew no sin became sin for us. We knew no righteousness, and now we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Perfect. You are perfect. No more shame, no more condemnation. Ah, I love the theme going on right now. You are eternally loved. You know what Jesus said? John 15, he said, let my love continually nourish you. In that moment of being born again, it was like, it was, you know, the vine we, we hear in John 15 about, I am the vine, you are the branches. It's like the vine came and connected to your spirit. And it was such a perfect connection. It says that everything needed for divine, for life and godliness has been given to us by the divine power that was in that moment. Now, can you pull away? No. You're divinely connected. Can you do something where you separate from the love of God? No. No, no. There's nothing you can do. God knows you live in this flesh. God knows you live in this world where there's so much junk happening. He knows that our minds are complete, constantly bombarded by negativity and falseness, things that are not true. He knows that, and there's so much grace, grace, heaped upon grace. Let me read from you John 1, verse 14. And we gazed upon the splendor of his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, overflowing with tender mercy and truth. Always remember, tender mercy and truth are connected to you. Your spirit, the real you, the real you. This is a tent. The mind is there only to help you connect your heart with the spirit. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Okay, let me explain real quick. So you have a soul, boom, thinking, feeling, decision making, okay? Soul is very important. It needs to be renewed all the time to the real you, who you are, already healed, fully loved, fully victorious, full authority. That spirit is connected to perfect authority. Perfect authority. Jesus says that when you are born again, you will see the kingdom of God. You have sight. You will enter the kingdom of God. He says, I'm going to knock at your door. You're gonna, I'm going to come in, spirit man. I'm going to sit down with you and tell you everything that you have. That's our relationship with God. Tender mercy and truth, grace, favor, sweetness, pleasure, delight. This is who you're connected to. John taught the truth about him when he announced to the people, he's the one, set your hearts on him. Say this aloud, I've set my heart on Jesus. And now, out of his fullness, we are fulfilled. Is there a place for more filling if you're fulfilled, filled to the top? If a vessel is filled to the very top, is there more to be poured into? No. You are filled. And from him we receive grace heaped upon more grace. The grace of God, hallelujah. What is the grace of God? It is his strength made perfect in your weakness. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray through one of my favorite psalms for you, and it's Psalm 23. So just close your eyes and listen, please. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I want you to let all your wants fall off of you. 
If there are wants on your heart, let them fall. shoulders. If you have wants, let them fall. The wants that bounce from ear to ear, let them just drop out. And see Jesus in his eyes. Pools of love. Pools of Sit down, he says, right here. Oh, it's a big, wide open space. Can you believe it? It's not small. It's huge, and it's green, and it's soft, and it's lovely, and the music and the wildlife is so calming. Sit down. I'm going to restore your soul right Isaiah 61 anointing comes out of his hands like oil, healing your broken heart. He's putting his hands on your heart. Closing up the fissures. He's putting hand on your mind, calming. Don't be troubled. He's restoring your soul. takes your hand and you start walking on this path of blessing. Wow. It's so beautiful. The word of God is on every stone you walk on, every promise, the promises of God. You step on stones that say, I am the Lord God that heals your body. I am peace and my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. And you start walking on these stones of promises for your life. I'll provide every one of your needs. I'm your comfort. I'm your guide. I am your teacher. I'll lead you in the way of righteousness and the path of blessing. And that path goes into a darker valley. But Jesus Christ is in front of you, and you grab hold of that beautiful, righteous garment of his, and he lifts it up and he places it on you as you walk together through the dark valley. And that is the place you do hear the lion snarl, the deceptive voices of you're not enough, but you're so walking with your Savior. And he's got a rod, and he's crushing each time a deceptive word is spoken. And there's a beautiful staff in his hand. As you stop and you get tired, he lifts you up with that staff and you walk through it always. And if you're in that dark place right now, you're going through with him. I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Lo, I am with you, God, to the end of the ages. And then the beautiful, glorious sun rises above the mountain and you see that sun and it warms your face and you and Jesus stop and receive the glory of God in your face and it warms up your whole body restoring any kind of unsettling it's like when Jesus said peace be still to the waters there you are with the beautiful sun filling up your entire being and then Jesus has a table in front of you and he says sit down oh my what a table but first he takes from his waist a jar and he pours the oil out of the jar over your head over your heart over your hands over your feet the anointing oil of Isaiah 61, a strengthening, reminding you of who you are, a 
and then he gives you a cup. Ooh, it's the best wine ever. It's a celebration wine. It's a, I'm so proud of you, honey. Come on. It's a, It's a covenant wine. And he feeds you the rest of the beautiful fruit on the table, all the promised fruit. Each one of them are seasoned with orange, some heavenly love. And then he speaks over you today. Listen to your name being spoken right now, Lord Jesus. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever you are my eternal daughter. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to do a discussion right now as well. And this is my um, this is my question for you. Will you share if you haven't already? And if you haven't shared yet, let's start with that person. Um, what is your greatest challenge in life right now? Okay. Um, try not to you know just just the one thing. Okay. Don't go too long. Now, here's the, here's the kicker, though, because this is where we're going to pull it in. What is the fear comment statement associated with this challenge? I'm not enough. I'll never be pain-free. I'm being punished. Let's get real. These are your sisters, and this stays in this room. Now, the people listening, I want you to get your warrior gear on. And it is time to lift her up and say, this is what's true. You are going to be the one who's going to say, you know what? You are enough because your spirit is enough. He made you enough. You know what? This pain is temporary. You, you know what I'm saying. And if you can find scripture to build up that woman with this challenge and that ridiculous fear statement. Get a scripture and just slice it with that sword of the truth. Amen? Go for it. 